Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And, of course, we're going to be talking trades. Everybody loves trades in the land, don't you? We just did a Tarasenko trade, a Brian McCabe trade. There's talk about a whole lot of other trades. Remember when I did the Horvat trade, like, in the beginning of the year, and everybody thought it was crazy? Why would Vancouver trade Horvat? Blah, 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 blah. You might want to check that video out. He got traded. Islanders were top of the list of where I thought he would get traded, and that's why I do these things, because they're fun. I like trying to predict stuff. All right, today we're going to be looking at Ryan O'Reilly of the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues fans are going to feel like I'm picking on them, but let's face it, the St. Louis Blues are not known for giving old players long contracts. Tarasenko's up, O'Reilly's up, they sign their young guys to long-term contracts. Seems like the writing is a bit on the wall. And uh, we're going to look at an article that kind of gives us the indication that's likely the case. Um, also, we're going to look at return and seven teams that may be interested in him. Now, he is he probably will be a rental, maybe not. Some of these teams, as you'll find out, might be able to sign him, sign him longer. Um, but even if he is, we're going to look at one article from last year that had a comparable player come up on the market, and he went to Florida, and the return that they got. And I think that that's somewhere around the return that the St. Louis Blues are going to be looking for. We're going to look at Ryan O'Reilly, what he brings uh, his contract, all of those things like that. So get yourself out your popcorn. While you're doing that, I'm going to give you a little perlo dance. And let's get at her. Yes, that's a perlo dance. If you don't know what that is, I don't know. Something's wrong. You you got to get you got to get into the uh, the trends. <laughs> Where are we here? There, there is the article. That shows us what Claude Giroux got last year for from the Florida Panthers. Uh, it was traded. Uh, by the way, Claude Giroux here also something I want to mention. He had like basically a full no movement clause, and they still managed to get Owen Tippett, which is a solid young prospect, a first round pick in two thousand twenty four, and uh, or 25, and a third round pick in 2023. That was a pretty good haul. And I think, at the very least, that's what St. Louis will probably grab for O'Reilly. So that's what we're going to be looking at. As I've been doing these, especially for those uh, people that, when I was doing the Tarasenko trade, other trades, all a lot of people said, I'd, I'd rather have O'Reilly. I want O'Reilly. I want O'Reilly. And I don't blame you. Let's look at St. Louis. Okay. St. Louis, like I said, they signed Robert Thomas, and this is his last year of his $2.8 million. It's going to be eight point some million after that. Uh, also want to mention that O'Reilly's hurt right now. It's just a broken foot. He'll be fine before the deadline. Not too much to worry about there. So I don't think the injury is going to have much to do with anything when it comes to who's going to be looking for Ryan O'Reilly. So what are they going to want in return? Well, first of all, let's say that as with Tarasenko, they are almost certainly going to have to retain here on the contract. Because the first thing people say is he makes seven and a half million. We can't fit him in. I, for the life of me, don't understand how people, how uh, people don't know by now that you can retain salary, but I'll let you know. Maybe you're new. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're kind of new to hockey and stuff like that. A team can retain up to 50% of a player's salary. Now, we're going to look at Ryan O'Reilly here, and we're going to look at his salary. Uh, meaning that they pay for, say, half of what how whatever his uh, cap hit is, and the other team pays the other half to make it so it can fit in the cap for whoever they are trading to, which usually makes it so they can get another draft pick or two out of it. That's doing the team a favor in a lot of ways. So 
Ryan O'Reilly, uh, $7.5 million a year. He's 32 years old. Part of the reason why, I suppose, that they're um, – you know, thinking about trading him here. Uh, he's got, he's an unrestricted free agent after this year. He can go wherever he wants after this. And he can sign for whatever he wants. What he's going to get in his next contract is really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what somebody is going to give to a 32 year old. Is somebody going to go, is there a team out there that's going to go nuts and give, pay him till when he's 40? I have a feeling that teams are done with that now. <laughs> In the cap world, I have a f- feeling that teams are done with that. I think he would get about maybe six and a half, seven in the next contract, somewhere somewhere like that. Um, but some team may go cray cray, and it might be one of the teams who are looking to trade him, trade for him. So if you retain half, you're looking at 3.75. You're only allowed to retain half of the salary, and it's only for this year. Because he's a free agent next year. So you have no contract with him after that. Very likely that he's a rental. And we saw what Florida gave. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. What Florida gave last year. So that's what we're going to look at the as the parameters of what a team may give up to go there. Now there's something you got to notice here. And I was surprised by this too. Ryan O'Reilly does not have a no movement clause. So he he doesn't really control where he goes. Now, hopefully, maybe I, I would think that St. Louis would at least discuss with him and try to make it a spot for him to be happy and all of that. But I have to say that of all the teams in the league, St. Louis Blues aren't the team that really seems to have a lot of heart in those situations. They do what they're going to do. They have a plan. This is the way it is. And... Uh, they, you know, they trade, they let Peter Angelo be go, go because of contract. Uh, they traded Shattenkirk just before a playoff run when they were still in a playoff race. Um, and it's actually, I think it's caused St. Louis some problems here when they sign these young players and they're not even talking contract with the old players. It brings a kind of really awkward energy to the room. And on, I don't think that's going to change here. So, they can trade him anywhere. He does. He can't really do anything about it. The only leverage that he has is that there are some teams that maybe he's willing to sign long term with. In which case, that could increase the value for St. Louis, and they'd be willing to take care of him. That so that's going to be part of the seven teams, I believe it is, that he could be traded to here. Um, now, what about him as the player? He's 32. He's won a Selkie trophy because he's one of the best two-way players in the game. Has been for the last many years. And he still is a great two-way player to this day. Don't let that minus 28 fool you. He's a great player. I don't care about, honestly, I don't pay too much attention to plus minus. It's been a brutal year. Uh, Yes, he's only had 16 points. I know that I, when I send this out to the land, they're going to be like, he's done, it's all over. I don't think general managers out there think that at all. I really don't think that they think that O'Reilly is washed up because St. Louis has had a brutal year and O'Reilly was part of it. I think especially when you're talking about winning a cup and there's only so many players out there. You gonna take a shot with this guy? Almost for sure. Uh, for sure, there's gonna be a team that takes a shot with him. No doubt about it. He's already won a cup. He's a Selkie Trophy winner. He can play many roles for you. He can. He still puts up some pretty good point production, and he can play against the other team's top line and shut them down. You don't think there's gonna be teams wanting to do that? You don't think your team is gonna be wanting to look at that? I think you're in big. You know. <laughs> I think you're going to be very disappointed. Let's put it that way, because there are teams that are going to almost no doubt about it. All right, let's start. And this is the, the early ones are, are more to do with what the big team I've heard a lot about being interested in him. And 
The later teams are the ones that I think are more likely that he goes to. All right, let's start with the Minnesota Wild. And I get Minnesota Wild fans saying all the time, are we going to go for O'Reilly? Are we going to get a center? Or are we going to... Okay, well, Minnesota is in a playoff spot. Uh, you know, they're playing fairly well. The question you have to ask for yourself, we're going to look at the standings here, bring the standings up here. I think the question you have to ask yourself when it comes to, come on, go. Go to standings. There we go. I'm in my uh, cabin out in the woods, so I have like very slow internet connection. Wild card. Minnesota. Wild card. Wild card. There we go. Minnesota, third place in the central. Uh, have, they have teams nipping at their heels. Their 58 points is below a lot of teams, as you can tell. Um, they've been do, playing well, but would you really call them a contender right now? I don't think so. Minnesota fans, do you think so? However, we saw what Garen did last year bringing in Flurry. And Minnesota is not far from St. Louis. I know this is interdivisional, so you would say that, you know, they're not going to do it because it's within the division. I think for a rental, I don't think it matters, to tell you the honest truth, if in fact it's going to be a rental. And with Minnesota's next year, what do they got? $9 million in cap space. They got players to sign. They're going to have Dumba's probably going to get traded. So it's highly unlikely. This would more or less be a rental. No doubt about it. Which we saw with Giroux. What they would be looking for is a young player, a first round draft pick, which they have the 2023. Now, in the Giroud deal, they did, it was a 2024. It's possible, depending on the player, that is, you could just get away with a 2024. Especially since Minnesota is in the middle of the kind of middle of the pack right now. It's a lower pick. Um, in this draft, I think he could be had, personally, for that 2023 first in Sam Steele. Sam Steele is still a young player. Uh, he could fill in that center role for St. Louis for next year. Maybe another prospect or another pick or something like that. But you've got Ryan O'Reilly, Kaprizov, Zuccarello. You have, with Erickson Eck and Ryan O'Reilly, even as a rental, you probably have the best shutdown top two centers in the league. And... The, I believe in this league, in order to win, to seriously win, there's one area a team should have that can conquer the other team. Ryan O'Reilly and, and Joel Erickson -Eck as your top two shutdown centers, that's going to make it extremely difficult for the Colorados, for anybody out there, Edmonton Oilers, to get around those two, man. You've got a, a Big advantage that you can shut down the other team's top two centers extremely effectively. Now, as far as the rest of the team, of course, you got Zuccarello, you got Kaprizov, uh, Green, that Greenway Erickson, Erickson Eck, and uh, usually Felino's on that line is one of the best shutdown. This would be one of the better defensive teams in the league. And what wins in the playoffs? Defense. I don't think they'd be able to sign him long term. I think it's a heck of a lot to give up for a rental, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to think that too. But it completely depends on if Bill Guerin thinks he can put them over the top. I'm not sure if the, I have the answer to that. Let me know in the comments section. I personally think, even with him, I don't do this deal. Um, I believe that Minnesota is working towards getting the suitor contract 
and Parise contract off the books. And then they're going to put together a team that is possibly a superpower. Seriously, it could be that good. Um, so that would mean to me keeping that 2023 first, grabbing prospects, building that farm system, building your depth rather than trying to take a rental and maybe losing the second round or something like that. I don't think Ryan O'Reilly makes this team a true, true contender. I do think Ryan O'Reilly makes this team a team that could surprise people in the playoffs. And you never know, right? You just never know. And for me, if I'm going to make a deal with like Sam Steele, a first round pick or another prospect, um, to get a player, I don't want to be in you never know territory. I want to feel like I am now in, we are right up there with the best. And I don't think this makes Minnesota that. Tell me what you think, Minnesota fans. Subscribe to my channel. Go over to my YouTube channel. Search Perlo Wisdom on YouTube. Because don't try to do it on Facebook if you're watching this on Facebook. It won't work. You got to search Perlo Wisdom. And it Perlo Wisdom NHL or NHL Perlo Wisdom. You'll find me there. Subscribe to my channel. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Next, Dallas Stars. Now, I struggled to put this deeper than I have it. I, I don't know. The next couple teams, actually, I kind of put them all in the same category of likelihood of this happening. Again, it's interdivisional. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say there's no way that they're going to sign a guy like Ryan or trade, trade him in within the division. I don't think they mind if it's a rental. Again, it's it's not like he may stay in Dallas. Um, let's look at Dallas's. Let's see if there's any chance that Dallas can uh, sign him after this. He's probably going to be looking for at least six and a half million a year. I would say at least he's making seven and a half now. I don't know if anybody's crazy enough to give him a seven and a half million long-term contract. You never know. You've seen it in the league. Eight million in cap space after the season. Can't see it. Definitely not. But look, taking the Giroux model from last year, we're looking at a first-round pick, a prospect, and possibly another pick. A player to play now. It was a good prospect that Jurer got. It was uh, uh, it's Owen Tippett, a really good prospect. So, first of all, where how would O'Reilly work in this lineup? It would be beautiful in this lineup. Are you kidding me? Ropo Hints and Ryan O'Reilly is your top two centers. You got Sagan playing with Marchman. You're this is unlike Minnesota. If Dallas was going to do a rental, this would put them in could win the cup territory. I believe so. I think they already kind of are. But with O'Reilly shutting down other teams, like something else I didn't look at with O'Reilly here that I wanted to mention. Look at his playoff stats, man. He's a playoff dude. 12 points in 12 games, 11 points in 9 games. When they went to the Cup, he had 23 points in 26 games. He has better playoff stats than he does regular season stats. He's a playoff guy, man. And Dallas has set themselves up, as far as I'm concerned, to be a true contender in the West, to be able to take out a team like Colorado or Vegas or anyone else for that matter. So, how long do you want to wait around here? Is it time? Is it time to pick up the guy who's won a cup already? Who can shut down the other team's top line? Has, has shown to be a point-of-game player in the playoffs. And he can play with Sagan and Marchment. And you can move Faxa down in freaking almost down to the fourth line even. How deep are you? God, that would be an amazingly deep 
lineup if they were to do this. So you're going to say, oh, yeah, but salary cap, can't do it, salary cap. Can't do it, salary cap. St. Louis is going to retain half. I say Dennis Gurianoff is part of the deal. Now, I don't think Dennis Gurianoff, and I did this, with uh, a, another Tarasenko deal that I had going to Dallas. I don't think he's a huge part of the deal. It's more of a way to make up money, but he is only 25. He's got tons of speed. St. Louis can work with him and see what they can do. And he's a restricted free agent at the end of the year. So that would be to make the money work. And then the trade starts. They're going to have to look at... Uh, somebody like Med- Blue Mel, I would think, and a first round pick. I wouldn't want to give up Thomas Harley in this deal. But I would consider Blue Mel. He looked really good when he came up. He only got one goal, but he looks like he's going to be a player. The first round pick, I don't think they have a 2023. No, they don't. I can't remember who they traded that to. What was it? Traded away. I don't Who cares? Doesn't matter. 2024 first. Blue Mel and Guriana. For Ryan O'Reilly. And yes, it would be a rental. If there's any team that can afford to do a rental. And not only that, Ryan O'Reilly is not a guy that doesn't work in people's lineup. Like, you're just going to ruin the chemistry. Ryan O'Reilly is a leader, man. Everybody loves Ryan O'Reilly. I really can't see him coming up and blowing things up in Dallas and changing the, the whole, up. what do they call it, upsetting the apple cart. I could definitely see Dallas in this. Definitely. All right. What do you guys think, Dallas fans? Search NHL Pearls of Wisdom on YouTube. You'll find me. Subscribe to me. Let me know in the comment section what you think. And here's a big one. This is rumored like crazy. I guess almost everybody's rumored to go here, though. But this one even sounds like it might even have some legs. The Toronto Maple Leafs. I'll tell you what. Uh, When Matthews comes back, you have John Tavares. Do they really need another center? Not exactly. But if... Ryan O'Reilly is available, and they're willing to retain half. Would you not have probably the deepest center group in the league, possibly in the East? And does Toronto really have a guy like Ryan O'Reilly? He would bring offense to the third and fourth. How many times have I heard it? Watching Toronto games or listening to anybody talk about Toronto on TV or whatever the case may be, and I think it's absolutely right. This team doesn't have enough scoring depth. Well, Ryan O'Reilly in the playoffs is a point-of-game player. He's also a shutdown center. Do they have a shutdown center? Is David Kampf a shutdown center? He's not bad, but he's no Ryan O'Reilly. Certainly not winning a Selkie anytime soon. Um, So, yeah. I think they would at least be picking up the phone. It would certainly change the whole complexion of this team. And I don't think he's upsetting any apple carts. This guy's got character coming out of his yin-yang. If anything, he's going to come in and bring a compete level that maybe even Toronto hasn't even seen yet. This guy's one of the most competitive players I've ever seen. How is that going to ruin the chemistry? I don't see it, man. So what's going to go back? We're looking at the Claude Giroux model from last year. A prospect, a first-round pick, and possibly even another pick. I know you're all screaming cap space, cap space, cap space. I can hear it from here. I can hear it in all the land right now. Cap space. How much cap space does Toronto have right now? A million point eight. So they're going to retain 3.7. We got to make up 2 million somehow. Well, that's an easy one right off the get go. There's no need for Alexander Kerfoot if you bring in Ryan O'Reilly, right? So I think St. Louis could use Kerfoot. They could see if they could sign him. And he's a serviceable player, no doubt about that. Does that make it like 
does that make okay? So we don't need a prospect now. Nay, nay. <laughs> Alexander Kerfoot, St. Louis would be helping you out by taking this deal, so you can have cap space. So it's going to actually even cost you more, I think, if you do that. So 2023 first is pretty much right out the window right now. And I know, I know that this is probably, I'll say probably. A rental, but with Toronto, they got $12 million next year. And they have a lot of guys to sign that really don't make a lot except for Bunting. Bunting's going to get a big contract next year. If you're not going to be able to sign Bunting, or if you let Bunting go, is it possible that they could pull O'Reilly out of their hat next year? It's kind of unlikely. It's probably a rental. But Giroux got a first, and Giroux got a prospect, and Giroux got a third-round pick last year on top of it. And they didn't have as much leverage as St. Louis does because O'Reilly doesn't have a no-trade clause. So I think Nicholas Robertson's in the deal. Nic Nicholas Robertson, Kerfoot, in a 2023 first. And you're all going to say no. See, that's the thing. Fans think their team is already good enough. Already good enough. We're already going to do that. I'm not so sure about that. I'm I'm a little unsure that, and I think Toronto is unsure that they have the offensive depth to be able to beat Boston. You know why? Because they didn't beat Boston. And the reason why they didn't beat Boston this last time was because they didn't have enough offensive depth. Also, Boston has Bergeron, one of the best two-way centers in the game. And what does Toronto have to combat that? Offense. They have offense. They have offense. They can play offense. Up top level offense. Top six offense. Which Bergeron can shut down one of them. What it, while Bergeron is doing that, what's Toronto got to shut down anybody else in, in uh, Boston? Getting Ryan O'Reilly, you have somebody. He can shut down the opposition's top line all the time. He's been amazing at it. He should have probably won more Selkies than he already did. And he's a good offensive guy. You've got Toronto would have one of the deepest top threes in the league with this deal. Now, is it, it well, they won't have it next year, but you got it this year. And Ryan, like I said, Ryan O'Reilly isn't going to be hurting any chemistry, I don't think. Toronto Maple Leafs fans what do you think about that? Justin Hull, by the way, doesn't have to come back either. It's possible that they could actually sign O'Reilly next year. It's very, very possible. Where? I didn't even look. Where is Ryan O'Reilly from? Clinton, Ontario. Might get a hometown discount. Subscribe to my channel. Search Perlow's NHL Pearls of Wisdom or NHL Perlo Wisdom or something like that on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, comment in the comment section, and let you let me know what you think about that. Boston Bruins. Just talked about Toronto. Now we're going to talk about the Boston Bruins. And when I do these Boston Bruin trade videos, like I did with Tarasenko, everybody in Boston land is like, I'd rather have O'Reilly. Maybe some other guys as well, but O'Reilly's name comes up right away. And, of course, they're going to retain. They're probably going to take a player like Craig Smith or something to make the cap work. So don't even talk about the cap. I don't want to hear about the cap. It's easy. It's easy to take care of the cap. Not that big of a deal. They retain, trade Craig Smith, and then, this, and then the deal starts, though. Don't think that if you're giving Craig Smith in this deal that the deal started. It hasn't even started yet. In fact, you're doing them a favor by doing that because they don't need Craig Smith. But it certainly would go a long way to uh, making this deal happen. Quite simply, if Boston were to do this deal, and it's possible he could even be signed past this, Bergeron might retire next year. They could sign O'Reilly's 32 for like four or five, four years or something like that. And he could take over Bergeron's spot. 
right? So that's why I like this deal, is I think it's possible that they could even sign him past this year. And he's O'Reilly. Is there anything more Boston than O'Reilly? Come on now. And not only that, but more importantly than that, this would be the most entertaining top two shutdown centers that I have ever seen. This would give Boston two of the top four, probably, shutdown centers in the league. You could put Barkoff there. You know, there's a couple of guys. But O'Reilly is right up there with any of them. And you've already got the best of this generation who is playing absolutely insane two-way hockey still to this day. You got them both. What the heck is Tavares and... Matthew's going to do when they play Bergeron and O'Reilly. And that's the other reason why I think Toronto would be in in this deal. Because they're going to know that if they get O'Reilly, man, I don't know. <laughs> they got to get past Tampa Bay first. But forget about it. Look at Tampa Bay. Point. You're going to need guys like that. Bergeron takes point. They don't really have much for a second line center at the moment now that I think about it. They have Sorelli. You can chew those guys up with this lineup, man. With O'Reilly and Bergeron, I don't think there's a team in the league that's going to be able to ha handle that very well at all. And what wins in the playoffs? Defense. You got the two best defensive centers, like, like two of the top five best defensive centers in the league. And he already won a cup. And he's got a compete level that goes through the roof. There's no way he's going to be upsetting any apple carts, as people like to say here. You play him with Smith. You play Coil on the right side if you want. Do it that way. Uh, who else has still got to come in here? DeBrus comes back into the lineup again. You can play him with Hall and Coil on the right side. My God, that lineup is just built for the freaking playoffs, yo. Built. Boston fans, subscribe to my channel. Perlo's NHL. Pearls of Wisdom or Perlo NHL or NHL Perlo. P-E-A-R-L-O. Comment in the comment section and tell me what you think. I mean, I know, well, a lot of people, well, Boston fans are saying, well, we need defense. But you practically have defense if you get O'Reilly. I mean, that guy plays like a defenseman in the defensive zone. He's amazing. He's amazing. Next. New York Rangers, and they are usually in just about every target or every play to go place right now and i know you don't need a center you don't need a center but honestly and i've said this before i think Vinny trocek is better on the wing they haven't tried him on the wing this year i don't believe if i'm wrong new york rangers fans let me know but he's a passer he feeds off the wing a lot he plays well on the wing and Yes, this will be a rental. I get it. I know it's going to be a rental. You have to know within yourself if you think that the Rangers can win a cup this year. If you don't think so, then why are you even bothering? Really. Barkley Goudreau is one of the better defensive wingers in the game as well. You got the kid line. You put Trochik on the right-hand side. Barkley Goudreau can play down more on the fourth line, which, or, or you can play him up with Zibanejad and Panarin or what have you. But you finally got a five-on-five five player. Ryan O'Reilly is one of the best five-on-five five players in the league, and he's a center. And what I like about it is even as a rental, these guys like Hedl, Kako, Lafreniere can finally look at a guy and go, oh, that's how you play five-on-five. Five. Oh, I even in half a season or like 20 games in a playoffs, then what they're going to learn from Ryan O'Reilly would be insane. Let's look at if there's any possibility, and I, I doubt it, that the Rangers can keep Ryan O'Reilly past this year. They got $15 million in cap space next year. Uh, they sign Heedle to... What can he do a bridge bridge deal, four point five million something like that, but then you got Kion, K Andre Miller you got to sign up. It would be super tight to be able to fit him in there, but you never know. 
You actually, you never know with the cap going up. You don't need blay anymore. That comes off. That experiment is over, I would think. Um, but you got to sign Lafreniere. Kratzoff isn't going to get much more than he has right now. It's possible you could fit it in, getting bridges and everything like that. My God. And these, as far as I'm concerned, these kids need an Ryan O'Reilly to see how you actually play the game. This is, especially in the playoffs. Ryan O'Reilly is a freaking beast in the playoffs. Let's put it this way. I don't think the Rangers have a chance for the Cup without him, without a guy like that. I, I don't. Now, no, I shouldn't say that. They always have a chance. They have Shesterkin, okay? He can go absolutely cray-cray. It's possible. I just think it's a very low percentage that they win a Cup this year. With O'Reilly, uh, it increases it, maybe to 20 25%, something like that. But it gives you a darn good chance. And if you can find a way to re-sign him, let me know. Subscribe. Search Pearl of Wisdom on YouTube. NHL Pearl, Pearl of Wisdom. NHL Pearl of Wisdom on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel and tell me what you think. I'm going to be doing tons more videos like this too. And you you don't want to miss those, do you? Yeah. You don't need to sign a lock. You can get a cheaper goaltender than that. Probably. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I think it might be able to work. All right. Next. And this is the one, I mean, as soon as I go to a Carolina thing, I, I sent Terry, I had, I, in the Tarasenko video, I had Carolina as well. And they were like, we don't need, we need a second line center. We need a second line center. We need a second line center. I know. And I say, yeah, but what if you can't get a second line center? Well, here's a second line center, assuming he's willing to go to Carolina. And he's an amazing one, even at 32 years old. Yes, he's having a weak year this year, but I don't, Everybody in St. Louis is having a weak year this year. That is an absolute uh, chemistry disaster there. Like the uh, the room is 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 split. It's it totally just feels ugly. Everybody knows O'Reilly is going. Everybody knows that Tarasenko is going. They gave kids big contracts, and these guys see the writing on the wall. I mean, I, I don't care how professional or whatever you say. It's just hard to get that out of your soul. It's hard, especially when you won a cup and you went through the battles with the team and it looks like they're sending you away. I think it just made it very tough. And I don't think that O'Reilly is washed up. Tell me if you think so in the comment section. But Kasperi Kapanen, I still think, is, is going to be a very good two-way center. I do. 20 points in 51 games at 22 years old is not bad. Um, but, I mean, he's no Ryan O'Reilly. I agree with that. And you already have Jordan Stahl there who plays a beastly type game, maybe a little overrated defensively, but that's for another time. And do they have a guy that has won a cup and knows how to compete and plays better in the playoffs than he does in the regular season? Ryan O'Reilly was built for the playoffs. You throw him in between Svechnikov and Nietzsche, and you've got a shutdown guy like Sebastian Ajo as well, I was just talking about that with uh, Boston having Berger on, but this is almost as good. And all these young guys can feed off him. Rod Brindamore would freaking absolutely love him. And it's possible that he's not only a rental. So what do you got to give up? It's going to take... We, we already did it with Giroux, a first-round pick. It's going to take a first-round pick, possibly the 2023. I mean, you're in your 30th some odd spot. I know it's a deep draft, but it ain't that deep to worry about that. Uh, it's going to take a prospect, possibly Drury, somebody like that, and maybe even another pick on top of that. But... They, do they have cap space? Do they have cap space? Yeah, they have $10 million in cap space as it stands right now. 
So you wouldn't even, they wouldn't even have to retain, but you get them to retain anyway, so you can add more. First round draft pick, Drury, if they're, you know, if that's the guy, Drury's kind of not had the best year this year in the AHL, but he looks like he's certainly going to be a player. And possibly another pick on top of that, like a third or something like that. That's pretty much what Giroux, they give up for Giroux. And Jordan Stahl is not getting $6 million next year. Paul Stastny isn't even probably coming back, and you wouldn't need him if you were able to sign Ryan O'Reilly. You're going to need a goaltender, but how much cap space do you got? $29 million. You could definitely sign Ryan O'Reilly to three, four years. No doubt about it. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about that. I, I would do it. To tell, I, I just would do it. A guy like Ryan O'Reilly in this lineup, man, is like having, everybody says, like getting Williams back. He's like that. He's like Williams, but he's a center and a Selkie Trophy winner. One of the best two-way centers in the league. And he still has a lot of offense to give. Don't even, I wouldn't even pay attention to his offense this year. Put in this situation, in this type of system with Brindamore and stuff like that, just totally, he's tailor made for this lineup. Totally. Comment in the comment section, tell me what you think. All right, Colorado Avalanche. Number one. And the reason why I think they're number one is simply because he would want to go there. Like he would, I, I, he maybe does want to go to Carolina, but it's a long way from home. All right, especially if you're going to be, <clears throat> you know, a rental. But you got already won a cup last year. I, I don't think Ryan O'Reilly is going to be humming and hawing about this. They need a second line center after they lost Kadri. He's one of the best. Colorado is probably not maybe the most, but there's there's no team that is more analytically driven than Colorado. New Jersey Devils, Tampa Bay Lightning just so happens to be some of the best teams in the league right now. Uh, they build their, they build their team through analytics. O'Reilly is incredible analytically and eye test just got to watch it two-way unbelievable you got nathan mckinnon there and then you got ryan o'reilly shutting down the other team's top center every game and the guy's a point of game player in the playoffs he he, he he's built for the playoffs ryan o'reilly you put nachuskin mckinnon lekkinen or if you want to put ranton in Ranton, also one of the best two-way wingers in the game. So underrated. People don't even give him credit for that. And then have Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. So what's it going to cost? It's going to cost first-round pick in 2023 for sure. And uh, that probably, I mean, that would give you like no picks in 2023. <laughs> but we're trying to win a cup here, right? Uh, let's see. Can they sign him somehow? Yeah, the, I mean, J, JT Comper is a free agent. You could put him, St. Louis retains. I think JT Comper is part of the deal to make the money work. Uh, how much cap space do they have? Oh, look at that. They have $7 million in cap space, too. Incredible. They could almost do the whole contract, but I don't think they would. Uh, you could do that. They could retain. You could do JT Comper. And then you still got $7 million to add more to this lineup this year. Um, your first round draft pick in 23, and you're going to need a prospect here. I believe that's what's going to take. I believe it's going to take a first, possibly a player to make the money work. That's a good, good player to make the money work. JT Comfer is a pretty darn good player, but where is he going to play? If do you really need him? And, and not only that, Alex Newhook gets to watch. He's supposed to be that kind of player, an amazing two-way guy, and you get to see it coming from Ryan O'Reilly. Wow. 
it would be unbelievable for them to be able to do that. And a prospect like Foodie or uh, Jean-Luc Foodie. Yeah, Jean-Luc Foodie or something like that. Would you do it? I think I would. I think I would. Now the question, will they be able to re-sign him next year? I don't know if they'd want to. I, the, the big question that's going to come up at this with the Colorado fans is, well, then why didn't we just sign Kadri? So my answer would be, if they were to sign him next year, because Eric Johnson's not going to be making $6 million next year. He's going to make a couple. They have $13 million in cap space. JT Comfer's already gone in the deal. Rodriguez isn't going to make much more than that. Andrew Cogliano would tell I'd probably take a pay cut, same as Helm. Uh, New Hook is going to take some of it, but I think he could do it. I think he could do it. And since he's going to Colorado, I think there's a very good chance he'll do it for like three years till he's 35 years old so he can win some more cups. And that's the reason why they didn't want to do it with Caudry because it was just too long. The contract was way too long. If he's willing to shine the short-term deal to be with a con- what's going to be a contender for the next couple of years, maybe he is willing to do that. You could have Ryan O'Reilly for the next couple of years on top of this deal. So, But for now... Ryan O'Reilly in that lineup, you got, I would say, I mean, definite favorite to win the cup. That's when you, when I do, would do things like that, where you give up the first or give up whatever. And they've already given up all their picks anyways. It's not like you're building for the future here in Colorado. The time is now. Comment in the comment section. Let me know, boys and girls. Uh, in the comment section, search Perlo, NHL Perlo Wisdom on the YouTube there, subscribe to my channel, and let me know what you think about that. All right, that's my full 42. That one went long, but there was a lot to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.